We're going to talk and lab about being a little more deterministic in our root switch selection because if we don't choose which switches are going to be the roots for any particular VLANs, then what happens? If we leave STP alone, a single switch ends up being the root bridge for every VLAN in our network. Now, frankly, that is not the end of the world. Plenty of networks operate like that. You know, they just leave it alone. But depending on your network topology, depending on what your customer wants, depending on how large your network is, depending on how many VLANs you have, you might want to spread this around a little bit. Also, you could have a lower end switch end up winning the election and maybe you don't want that. You've got a powerhouse switch in the core of your network is like, hey, I want that to be the root for my VLANs. So we've got to know really two different ways to approach those. One of them being that we could choose another switch to be the root bridge for all the VLANs. Or we could spread that workload around a little bit and let's say we had five core switches and 50 VLANs. And perhaps we want to make each one of those switches the root for 10 VLANs. So we don't have to do all or nothing. We could do that, uh, but we can really spread that root switch roll around as much as we like. And we're going to look at both approaches here and see them in action in the next couple of videos. Now, one feature that gets overlooked quite often, but we are not going to overlook it, is that you can specify the secondary root for any given VLAN. So what we're doing, in effect, is saying, okay, if the root for this particular VLAN goes down, we can configure a switch to take over as the primary in advance of the primary, the first primary actually going down. So what you're doing is you're saying, okay, here's my secondary root. It's not going to act as the root, but if the primary disappears, this one automatically wins the election. Because otherwise, again, would be leaving the role of the root being left up to the switch with the lowest MAC address with all priorities being equal. Whew. A lot going on there, but now we'll see it in action and it does become much more clear. And before this lab, I did a write erase and a delete VLAN.dat on both switches involved because we're going to start with two and work our way up to three switches in this lab. Reloaded them and created VLANs 10, 20, and 30 for this lab. And please note the cabling has changed from the previous one. And as I mentioned, we'll be adding a switch and a couple of cables as this lab progresses. But right now, it's as simple as it gets. Switch one and two. They are trunking over a cable connected to their respective fast Ethernet 10 ports. And right now, switch one is the route for all VLANs, and that being 1, 10, 20, and 30. And, you know, me being me, I still have to verify it, even though I'm the one that configured it. So here we go with switch show spanning VLAN 10 on switch one. You can see the, this bridge is the route. Same for VLAN 20, and same for VLAN 30. So let's say first, though, what we want to do is make switch two the primary, but only for VLAN 20. We want everything else left alone right now. Let's take a look at how we can do this. Just a slight difference um, from a previous command, because I know all these spanning VLAN commands start looking alike after a while. But again, we're going to use spanning VLAN here. And here's our VLAN range. And since we're only going to work with one VLAN, that's the only one we'll put. And that's 20. And there's the root option at the bottom. And now notice that you have to enter primary or secondary. There is no CR here. So if you've come this far, you got to say, okay, are we configuring a primary or a secondary? So here we're going to do a primary. And there's a diameter option after that. We'll leave that for future studies. <clears throat> Pardon me. And let's see what happens. We can run 20 there in a second, but you can see already switch two is taken over as the root. This bridge is the root right in the center. Uh, notice a massive change to the priority is down to 24596 now with a priority of 24576 and sysidx20. And that's a system ID extension feature. And I'll have this on the board for you in a moment as well. well. Let's go ahead and chat about it for a moment now. Where this priority came from in this particular instance was the priority was changed to 24576 and 20 was added because we're talking about VLAN 20 and this particular feature is enabled by default the system ID extension feature. So it's going to tack on 20 there or whatever the number of the VLAN is. So let's see. Switch 2 is the route for VLAN 20, but what about VLAN 30? It is not. And you can see right there that switch one is still going to be the root there. And if we run a show spanning VLAN 10, 
then we see that switch one is still the root there as well. So let's take a moment here and go back to the board before we continue with the lab. Because I want to show you where that number came from, or that root priority. The new root's priority was 24,596. That was on switch two. And certainly good enough to make it the root, but where did it come from? Well, if the current root priority is greater than 24,576, what happens is the priority of the new root will be set to 24,576, plus the VLAN ID in this case, because the system extension ID feature is running. If the current root priority is less than 24,576, what happens is that 4,096 will be subtracted from the current root priority, and then you have the new root priority. So, a lot going on there too, but again, if that current root is greater than 24,576, then that's what the new root will have its priority set to. If the current root priority is less than 24,576, the switch will subtract 4,096 from that root priority and you have the new root priority. 4,096 will come into play in a couple of videos as well, so it's a good number to remember. And let's go ahead and take a look. With that secondary option, we chatted about that. We're going to use that in our next lab because what happens is when you run show spanning VLAN root secondary on the desired secondary bridge, that command will adjust the switch's priority enough to make it the backup root, but of course not enough to make it the primary root. And we're gonna see that in action here in just a moment. What we'll do first before we move on to that is do a uh, spanning VLAN 30 root. And why is that incomplete? Pop quiz, because <laughs> you got to put, well, let me get that out of there. You've got to put primary or secondary there. And we will verify. And I will check the time as well. But you can see VLAN 30 there, this bridge is the root. It was set to 24606, and that is 24,576 plus the system ID extension value which is 30 here because we're talking about VLAN 30, just that simple. So when we come back, we're going to add switch three here to the mix. And I will go ahead and open up the connections. We'll have it up and running. We'll check everything out. And then we're gonna start working with that secondary command a little bit. And of course, we're gonna test it by taking some switches down. And that is coming up next. <laughs> 